Hello all, so in this tutorial we will be focusing on the implementation of the activation functions. So before going to the details, uh, I would like to review some of the basics which we will encounter uh, during the implementation, mostly regarding what happens when we multiply to uh, signed binary number. Okay, so at the top you can see some constants are declared here. So at this time let me clarify them. So one is called data width. So data width is the width of the data which is coming to each neuron. And it is the width of the data which is going out of each neuron also. Okay. So we have designed it to be 16 here, but you can change it. That is one important thing. Another one is weight int width, which is basically specifying uh, out of this 16 bit so the weight as well as input data they will be represented using 16 bit out of 16 bits how many bits are representing the integer part of the weight is defined by this one so one bit for integer part and this is the assigned representation and when we say one bit for uh, integer part in signed representation that automatically says that is always a positive number Okay, it has to be always zero. Now, again, this actual value of this uh, bit will be defined by the module above this. Uh, this is just a dummy value. So maybe let's put four there and make it easier. So four means one bit for sign, three bits for the actual magnitude, okay, for the weight. Similarly, uh, in this module that is not needed, but you, when we design other modules, you will see uh, it will be also defined what is the integer width for the data path. So these two values can be different. Okay, And the overall width is 16 for both, but how many bits for integer, how many bits for fractional part can be different for the inputs as well as weights. Now let's come to a few things. So suppose we are multiplying two sign numbers. Okay, so number one, I have m integer part and n fractional part, and number two, a integer part and say j fractional part, and they are in sign number, sign representation, just complement. And when you do number one times number two, result there are two ways of representing either you can say the result will be will be the sum of total number of bits yeah, so here totally how many bits are there m plus n bits are there here k plus k bits are there so the total number of bits i can say it will be m plus n plus k plus t in sign multiplication some places you may also see it can be m plus n plus k plus j minus one i will tell you why it is out of this result m plus k integer part and n plus j fractional part will be there in the overall result. Now remember this integer part that includes the sign bit also. So if I separate that sign bit, uh, I can say like it will be two bit sign will be actually there and m minus one plus k minus one integer will be the excluding the sign okay that magnitude part and n plus j fraction will be there so the there will be two sign bit which will be uh, exactly same so if the result is positive the first two bits will be two zeros if it is negative first two bits will be one okay so that's why uh, you can also say the result can be m plus n plus k plus j minus one uh, by omitting the most significant bit in the result because that is again the same sign bit so keep this in mind because that's why you will see in our implementation, uh, wherever we are storing the result of multiplication, you can see here, 
mult is the signed multiplication of input and weight and the size of mult is defined as 2 times data width minus 1 based on this one. It's, it will be double the size of the data. Okay. But actually, uh, it will have two sign bit, as I mentioned before. Now, we are not directly using this mul. You can see this mul is constantly added with sum. And finally, that sum will be added with bias also. So, sum, if you see, its width is also defined as two times data with minus one. So, what I am doing is I am adding two numbers with same size. So, the result can be one bit more than this one. Okay. So, the overall composition of this sum will look something like this. There will be one bit sign. Then we will look at the integer part. It will be size of int part of input that my input plus size of int part of weight plus one because of this addition thing this additional one bit will be the in that integer part so this many integer part then size of fractional part of input plus size of fractional part of weight. So this many fractional part will be there. Okay. So overall the size of this sum will be 2 times data width minus 1 and this is how it is come. Data width is same for uh, input as well as weight but the composition can be different integer part and the fractional part but when we look at the sum uh, as a whole its size will be Two times data with minus one. So this we need to keep in mind because uh, things may be slightly confusing here. So I found the sum. Now what I'm doing is this sum should be used for uh, getting the output of the activation function. Now, as I mentioned before, we can support two kinds of activation function in the current implementation. One is a sigmoid, another one is ReLU. We will look uh, one by one. Now, if I'm using sigmoid, ideally this is how sigmoid function looks like. So this is where uh, your input in the x-axis and y-axis is the output of the activation function. And it varies between 0 and plus 1. So uh, ideally what we should do is this sum should be directly fed. Yeah. So the result of multiply accumulation plus bias should be directly given to the activation function unit and it should give us the output that's how it will be happening in software now the problem here is the size of this sum as i mentioned is two times data width minus one so if i'm using a 16 bit data width the size of sum is 32 bits remember the size of sum is 32 bits so if i'm going to use a lookup table for storing these activation function values. The depth of that lookup table, okay, depth of lookup table for sigmoid, if I am directly feeding this sum there, should be 2 to the power of 32, that is the depth. And each entry in the sigmoid, because the output of the sigmoid is going as the input to the next neuron. So as far as next neuron is concerned, the input is coming from the previous neuron so the size of the value the width of the value coming out of this lookup table should be my data width that is 16 bits so the size of the memory which i need to store this sigmoid value will be something like this this is 4g you can see 4g times and this is uh, 2 bytes 8 gigabytes that is the size of the memory that we need and uh, that is for one neuron so of course you can see this is not a practical thing we cannot do anything like this we cannot do any adjustment on this value uh, because as i mentioned this is going as input to the next neuron so it should be kept as 16 bit but the depth of the lookup table used for storing these values cannot be this much so we won't be able to directly feed this sum 
to the activation function instead of that uh, we will take only some most significant bits from this one and we will feed it to the activation function so that value you can define and that is what is given here as sigmoid size so here it is 5 okay 5 or 10 something like that if i say 10 that means the depth of that memory is to the power of 10 which is 1024 and each one of them is this one so 1k to 2k 2 kilobytes that is also big but nothing compared to this one right so that is what we are going to do so this value we have defined and we are taking only those many bits from this sum value and feeding to the so-called the sigmoid rom sig rom this is the module so here you can see two times data with minus one minus sigmoid size that means take the upper sigmoid size those many bits from sum and give it to this module and this is the guy who is going to give the output so let's look at that module this is that module so inside you can see there's a memory this is that uh, rom which will store this pre-calculated value and this is where we are loading that pre-calculated value okay sigcondent.mif memory initialization function and we store it there now if you look at sigcondent again this is the case when the depth is uh, 1024 you can see that means sigmoid size is 10 defined as 10 okay uh, you can see how how the values are changing. So this data is 16 bit, but here you won't be seeing 16 bit always because uh, the leading zeros are omitted here. So here, if you see, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 bits only. So that means the 16th bit is 0. And uh, if I look at the definition here, this is going as data to the next neuron right so if you look at the definition here what is the int width okay that is not defined here that is defined in some other place we will come to that uh, it is defined the integer part of input is only one bit okay so integer part is one bit and remaining 15 are fractional part as far as input data is concerned that means here the integer part is zero so this should be read as zero point this one okay so that is what is this one so if we uh binary to decimal if we see what is that value it will be this value it's approximately one but it will never reach one because we'll reach one only at infinity okay now similarly if you look at a middle value so this is 1024 so half of it even from the picture you can see 1024 altogether so half of it will be for negative numbers half of it will be positive number the middle number uh, when we feed zero should approximately give 0 0.5 so if i go to 513 here uh, you can see 513 okay this one again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 that means the 16th bit is 0. You can see it's giving 0.5. The value before that, you will see there are only 14 digits. That means there are two zeros. Out of that, one zero is representing the integer part, and remaining one zero is part of the fraction itself. So that is actually 0 0.49, this value. So on and so forth. Okay. So that's how this guy is going to work. Now, it is very difficult to manually calculate this table because uh, you may have to do it for a uh, different depth of sigmoid memory. Based on the depth of the sigmoid memory, your resource utilization is going to change. The more depth, the more resource utilization, but better the accuracy. And if you keep it smaller, vice versa. So I will provide you this Python script. Okay, This guy will do it for you. The only thing you have to specify is what is the total data width, what is the depth of the sigmoid memory, and in your weight, how many bits are representing the integer part, and in your input, how many bits are representing the input part. Okay, so once you specify this many, we can just do Python gen sigmoid pi, and 
he will generate this table for you. Suppose uh, you don't want to use 10 bit for representing the sigmoid, you want to save some resources. That means you want only five, the dup. That means 32 entries. We can run it. And you will see like there are only 32. Out of 32, this is representing where the input x value is zero and these values are positive values x values okay output corresponding to positive values of x this part represents the output values corresponding to negative values of x in our case uh, that x is actually these upper bits of sum this one so he will do it for you. okay so that's how it is stored here now uh, this is where we are taking output from sigmoid and sending it out okay so this y is acting as the index for reading and you can see like the x is not directly used as the index y because our input coming here after all uh, multiplication and summation that is again a signed number there can be negative and positive number but the address to the memory is always a positive number we cannot have negative address so whatever value is coming here if you directly feed it to the sigmoid memory if negative numbers are coming you know its most significant bit is one so if you are directly feed it that is actually representing a higher address so instead of getting a smaller value out of sigmoid i'll be getting a larger value so that is the trick done here so you can see what is done so whatever x is coming here first we are checking dollar sign of x greater than zero that means whether it is a positive number if it is a positive number i am adding two to the power of in width minus one to that in width is the depth of the sigmoid memory so if it is 10 you know this will give two to the power of nine so this is based on the idea if you represent a sign number using n bits the largest positive number will be 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1 so whenever positive numbers are coming this will appropriately calculate the address so it can be easily seen when x is 0 right if x is 0 what he does is 2 to the power of invert minus 1 which is representing the address the middle address in my sigmoid row similarly if negative numbers are coming here i am subtracting this from that Again, you can see here I didn't use signed subtraction. That means it is doing a unsigned subtraction. So when you look at the negative number in unsigned perspective, that is representing a large number. Okay. From that large number, I am subtracting this offset value. That means it will be offset uh, towards the beginning of the memory. So in that way, I will calculate the actual address. And uh, from memory, I take the appropriate value and give it to the output this is slightly tricky you will have to sit and look at and think about it to really see how how it is working you can also look at the python script so those you know some idea of python otherwise also it is easy this is where we are calculating the actual sigmoid value this function is for converting decimal to binary um, even for fraction numbers okay you just have to give the number for conversion you have to say what is the total data width and you have to say how many bits in the total data width is representing the fractional bit okay so this is uh, this will convert it into binary format and that is what is storing data here in this binary format and uh, this is where we are calculating for the data coming into sigmoid how many bits are representing integer part and how many bits are representing the fractional part and also, uh, as I mentioned here, I'm using combination circuit here, as a statement. That means this won't be implemented in a block RAM. This will be implemented in a distributed RAM. So you want to keep the size of uh, the sigmoid memory smaller also. So that's about sigmoid. Now, the other one is called RELU, uh, stands for Rectified Linear Unit. Uh, this is a more recent activation function. And 
now relu is much popular than sigmoid and it's much easier to implement relu compared to sigmoid because this is a linear function uh, sigmoid is a non linear function and this is how relu looks like you can see it's linear so it is defined as if the input is negative the output will be zero and if the input is positive output will be same as input that is what the definition of relu okay now since it is linear it's very easy to implement a circuit which does it so we don't have to use any rom for implementing relu so this is the module which is calculating uh, the value of that relu so here you can see uh, i'm directly feeding that enter sum here okay uh, we are not taking any part of it because here we don't have the issue of that uh, lookup table so that entire x comes here that sum and here it is easy to see here if i'm checking if it is positive sign of x greater than zero means if it is positive number we'll do something we'll look at it if it is not positive number the output is zero that is very straightforward now if it is positive number the output is supposed to be uh, same as input as per definition of relu now in hardware we cannot directly do it because the issue is you can see like for relu there is no upper bound as the input keeps on increasing the output should also keep on increasing but in hardware we have a limit that our output should still represent our fixed point representation okay so the number of bits representing integer part and number of bits representing fractional parts they should remain same in case of relu also so we cannot directly say out equal to x it will be uh, problematic uh, not only that again x is two times data width minus one but the output from the neuron should be only data width okay so again we cannot directly assign it here and we cannot just take the upper uh, data width bits from here and assign we cannot do neither of them so first we what we need to do is here i am checking any overflow is happening so this is where our initial discussion is also important so let's see how this input this x will look like here so we have one sign bit okay then we have weight into it is representing number of integer parts in the weight part then we have input width okay then we have weight fractional then we have input fractional that's how this entire x is composed of so we check the sign bit here that is greater than zero means this bit is zero now what i need is <clears throat> i need to make sure the output integer width will be same as this input integer width okay that is when there is no overflow if there are non zero elements in this portion of my output that is problematic that means there is overflow so what i am basically checking is if any bit in this area is one if any bit in this area is one means my overall number its integer part cannot be represented just using this input int width so you can see that is what is done here two times data width minus one uh, so that includes this bit also that's okay you can write uh, minus two also since it is guaranteed that uh, sign bit will be zero here uh, doesn't matter uh, starting from here i am checking int width plus one okay so starting from here all the way till this one plus one more bit why because this input in width composed of the integer part as well as the sign also so there shouldn't be any overflow happening to the sign part also that sign should again remain zero because the output from relu should be also zero so i am checking that many part to see if any bit is one if any bit is one that means overflow has happened because of that my output i am saturating to the maximum positive value so the maximum positive value will be sign bit zero and all the remaining bits one if there is no, no overflow what i can do is i can take this part 
starting from this part all this interior part and input frac those many bits and just assign it as output okay so that's what is done here so we are not just taking the upper uh, data width part instead we are starting from two times data width minus one minus weight in width okay so that represents these many parts these many parts we are discarding and we are starting from this part and until data width part so which will include this input in width plus input frac bit okay so this can i can either write like this or the other way and it will be clear this much plus if i write it here this many bits I am sending out. So I am satisfying the condition my output data width is also matching with my input data width. Again, this part also you will have to think uh, for some time. Uh, actually, during my implementation also, this took uh, some time to catch like why things are not always working properly. So, so this uh, this multiplication by sign number, especially in fixed point representation is slightly confusing so you may need to look at it in a bit more detail and a bit more practice it so that it becomes clear okay. again uh, the multiplication what we are doing is similar to how we do in decimal number so if you have 10.5 times 13.2 what you can do is 105 times 132 you find the result and in the result Let's see, 105 times 132, 13.860. We'll do like that. And finally, since there is one decimal point here, one decimal point here, there are some, you'll put two decimal points here, right? Same idea we are doing here in fixed point representation also. We forget about that fixed point. We do all the calculation as if those points, uh, they do not exist. And once we do all the calculation, uh, that point is fixed at a position uh, the sum of the fractional bits of these two numbers that's how we do it that's why you are not seeing that decimal point coming into picture anywhere but we always keep in mind that point exists in all this calculation and when you send the final output from this neuron which is coming from that activation function we should follow whatever is followed for this input Okay, so same number of integer bit, same number of fractional bits, and one sign bit. So we need to follow it. So I hope uh, you will check this out. And if there is any clarification required, please ask me in the comment. Uh, this script also I will put. So you can try with uh, different data widths and different sigmoid memory sizes for different integer part for these two guys and you can see how the output is coming uh, only thing you need to always keep in mind is yeah so the center value that should be approximately 0.5 representing when the input is zero all the values above that they goes out when the input is negative all the values below this goes out when the input is positive okay thank you see you in the next tutorial